Yo, there's Nance. There's, there's, there she is, the charismatic AOC. Stephanie must be throwing up right now. Um, and you can see for yourself that AOC is basically does not want Nancy Pelosi to be Speaker of the House. Wait, wait, here it is. And, and by the way, this is the uh, this is the media outlet of the uh, of the regressive left. The media outlet of the regressive left is the Young Turks. T Y T the Young Turks. Um, and uh, if you want to know what the regressive left is thinking, uh, by the way, one of the Young Turks, Senex, Senex, I can't pronounce his name, ran uh, ran for House membership. Uh, he, he he ran um, in a district that was going to elect a Democrat, and he lost so badly. I mean, the thing about the regressive left is, and I, I think, I think they act as if. They are a majority within the Democratic Party. They act as if they have, they're really popular. You, many of my listeners, act as if the regressive left is the Democratic Party and as if they're popular and as if they dictate everything. The Republicans act as if these people are the Democratic Party. But the fact is that within the Democratic Party, the real regressives get very few votes. So I think Senate got like 5% of the votes. He was like seventh in 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 the in the uh, voting, and we're talking about a very 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 well known media savvy media popular uh, regressive leftist, and he was demolished, demolished by the centrist you know uh, members of the Democratic Party. I mean, he had he, he got nothing. Nothing. So again, it, it. All right. Here we go. Whoops. It's muted. That won't help. Let me unmute her. Although, you know, with, with, uh, you could argue with the way you see being muted is an advantage, is a plus. But all right. We're, we're trying to talk about ideas. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez shared some pretty harsh realities regarding Democratic leadership during an interview with Jeremy Scahill for The Intercept. Let's take a quick look at her first statement. Are you ready to say Pelosi and Schumer need to go? I mean, I, I, I think so. I mean, and the question is, like this year, for example, the hesitancy that I have is that I... I want to make sure that if we're pointing people in a direction that we have a plan. And my concern, and this I acknowledge as a failing, as something that we need to sort out, is that there isn't a plan. How do we fill that vacuum? Because if you create that vacuum, there are so many nefarious forces at play to fill that vacuum with something even worse. So... The Democratic Party is is a civil, in civil war right now. So uh, the regressives have basically said, we don't want Nancy Pelosi. They don't have a candidate. Why don't they have a candidate? Because surprise, surprise, shockingly, they've only had two years to plan for this. Shockingly, they don't have a plan. They don't have a plan. Yeah, I mean, it's true that people who... Uh, workers bartenders rarely have plans because you don't need a plan. It's about you show up to work, you do. I mean, it, it, but you'd think that somebody among these regressives would have a plan, but I, don't, I guess they don't believe in plans. Plans are capitalist things, they're, they're business things. Pro- so there's no plan on what to do uh, to replace Pelosi and how to fill the vacuum created by the fact that if Pelosi's out, who do they have? They have nobody. But they consider Pelosi the devil. They really do. So there's a real clash, a real clash within the Democratic Party right now about the future of the party. Uh, you know, in, in the, the regressive left, which I think is a minority, uh, is going to be very unhappy 
and is going to be yelling and shouting for a long time, and which will make which will make for interesting politics. Uh, it, it's also interesting that um, you know the American people are. I mean, just it's just a fact that the American people, when it comes to particularly when it comes to economic policy, when it comes to uh, cultural policy, when it when it comes to the federal government, are centrists, not centrists. I mean, centrists in in a bad way, but better than better than these regressors. They want big government, but they don't want it too big. They want government regulation, but they don't want too much government regulation. They want. You know, they want something to be done about inequality, but they don't want too much to be done about inequality. They worry about losing jobs. You saw that with, with Trump's success. But they they don't want too harsh of a measure. They're really centrist. They're kind of stuck. They, they're neither here nor there. They're certainly not radical in either one of the directions. And... The you know the radicals on the on on the 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 far left, and then you've got the Trump. We'll talk about Trump in a minute. The Trump, um, you know, the the Trump on the uh, Trumpists on the right. There is a center there that if somebody could grab, if somebody you, you might even be able to form a third party that got away from all this squabbling and could dominate American politics. For, for, for a long time until, until people got sick of them. Uh, because at the end of the day, the center cannot stand, right? Because the center is nothing. The center has no content. But for a while, in the short run, it can stand. But in the long run, it is empty. So it, 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 it's not sustainable. But in the short run, I think the center would, you know, could, could win and, and, uh, and actually dominate politics for a while. But I don't see anybody with the courage. That's the problem of being a centrist. They have no courage. Uh, to do anything dramatic about it. So I, I see a lot of infighting. I mean, uh, uh, AOC and others have already attacked Biden for choosing what they consider centrist for the cabinet. Uh, Elizabeth Warren didn't get a role. Bernie Sanders hasn't gotten a role. Uh, you know, and, and younger, more aggressive, uh, more ambitious, whether it's climate change or other things, have not gotten roles. Uh, and, and it really is the old God. I mean, they put John Kerry, who's almost or maybe older than Biden, uh, in charge of, of climate change czar. I mean, the guy is, you know, again, no passion, no energy. It's not going to go anywhere. And I think that's Biden's purpose. He doesn't want it to go anywhere. He knows it's unpopular and it's a losing strategy. Pete, Pete Buttigieg got a, got a role, but Pete is not a is not a, a regressive, right? The regressives didn't like Pete. Pete was the enemy. Pete was considered a, a centrist sellout. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's a few people here and there within the Biden. I mean, he had to throw them a few bones that are a little left, right? There's the guy from Wall Street, BlackRock, who's, the, who's an environmentalist who, who he's brought in. There's a few others, but they're not powerhouses, not progressive regressive, sorry, powerhouses. So this administration will govern from the center to the extent that it can. And of course, uh, Republicans, hopefully, it looks like Republicans will pick up at least one of the Georgia seats. I'm still hoping for both of them. Uh, the, the latest polls show Republicans ahead. And, uh, you know, so if, if Republicans could get their act even semi together, they should win Georgia. Republicans will have control of 52 seats in the Senate. Uh, Biden won't be able to get anything radical across. What he'll be able to get is stuff that Demo Republicans agree on, which is scary enough, which is scary enough when Democrats and Republicans agree on. You can see that in the stimulus package that is still coming out where, where the discussion is not principled or fundamental. It's, it's all about power. It's all about power. And you can see it in the budgets and everything else. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting four years of divided government with, I hope, I hope, I hope, lots of good luck. Lots of good luck, in my view, the best, um, the best combination. The issue is, uh, Laufey is such a dummy. Yeah, she's the, the senator who's running for uh, the Senate in uh, Georgia. Yeah, I mean, they're all dummies. It's not an issue of being dumb. It's that she's got an R in front of her name, and therefore, 
uh, it will throttle the Biden Biden's initiatives. So even though he's not a regressive, he'll throw them some bones and those will be throttled by, and you have an excuse. Couldn't get it past the Senate. Sorry, guys. I tried. I really wanted to live up to your regressive ideas, but I couldn't get it past the Senate. The Republicans stopped me. All right. So the Democrats are trying to hold it together, but they're really divided, really divided. Uh, I think the um, establishment centrist wing of the Democratic Party is by far the majority. Uh, and, and many of them come from Republican states, so they, they know they would uh, lose the majority in the House like that if they went too far to the left. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they lost the majority in the House in 2022 anyway. So uh, the House is not going wacky left anytime soon. And the Senate is not going. I mean, you just don't have enough senators. You've got Bernie, you've got Elizabeth Warren. You've got maybe five, six others. You know, the Democratic Party is basically left of center, which is bad enough because the center is already so far to the left. And in your left of center, that's way to the left of where I would like it to be. But where, not where I would like it to be. Where I, I wish, even within the context of the world today, it would be. All right, let's turn to Republicans. What a mess. But what's interesting about the Republican Party is, and, and not just the party itself, but you can see this in the commentary online and everything, is exactly what I told you would happen is happening. I mean, first of all, there's already a civil war breaking out. And it's not between the never Trumpers and the four Trumpers. The civil war that's breaking out right now is, you know, among the, 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 uh, the people who support Trump. But the civil war right now is how loyal are you to Trump? It's all about loyalty to Trump. And what's stunning and so disappointing. And I mean, what do you, what do you, I don't know what you even say about this. It's so horrific. But what is truly horrific about this is that the, the loyalty test is, are you willing to subvert the law? Are you willing to subvert the will of the voters or not? In the name of loyalty to Trump, not in the name of anything else. And it's stunning to see that it really has boiled down to we don't need evidence we don't need facts we don't even trust the court system anymore because they they ruled against us the only issue is am i loyal or not loyal to donald trump and if i'm loyal to donald trump then this election is a fraud and i will fight for it as a fraud i mean ted cruz saying he will argue the case in front of the Supreme Court when he knows it's never going to get to the Supreme Court so there's nothing to argue. It's just virtue signaling to the base. But the base only cares about your statement about your loyalty to Trump or not. So the, the civil war right now is between the chairman of the Republican Party in Georgia and the governor and secretary of state, the chairman of the Republican Party in Arizona and the governor the governor of Arizona, the governor of Georgia, the secretary of state of Georgia, all supported Trump, all, as far as I know, contributed money to Trump's campaign, all of them, were on the campaign trail, campaign trail supporting Trump. But now, because they've certified a legal election for Trump, they are the villains. They're not loyal enough. They're not willing to endorse conspiracy theories in order to keep Trump in office for another four years. They're not willing to subvert the American way. They're not willing to subvert the principles of the Constitution and the principles of America. They're not willing to subvert that in order to keep Donald Trump in power. I mean, a big chunk of the Republican Party and a big chunk of his supporters online have become just Trump loyalists, just Trump worshippers. I mean, okay, we tried everything. You've gone to the courts. You've had, 
I think, at least 60 rulings against you. In Georgia, they've counted the vote three times. One recount by hand. So Dominion couldn't have done anything because they counted the ballots by hand, every single one of them. So even if Dominion switched the votes in Georgia, they counted the paper ballots. Now there's a question about the signatures. So they're doing another verification of the signatures in one county in Georgia. We all know how this is going to come out. It's going to come out that it's fine. Ann Coulter is glad Trump lost. That's surprising to me. I thought she was a huge supporter of Trump's. Although she thought he, he kind of was weak on immigration. Well, she's out there. So what's going to happen in the Republican Party is really interesting. How far are Republican senators and congressmen willing to go on January 5th to show loyalty to Trump? Will they question the Electoral College? Will they challenge the vote? How long will they challenge it for? Will they challenge it once kind of to show their credentials as Trump loyalists? Or will they challenge it all the way? How far are these state Republican parties going to go in challenging the governors? Governors who, again, were pro-Trump. In states where if the Republicans don't hold together, they could lose the governorship. Right now, they dominate. They, they, they hold the governorship in Arizona and Georgia in spite of the fact that both states voted Biden. But if they start fighting, they start breaking up, what happens then? And then, of course, this is still a battle among the Trump loyalists in a sense of how loyal are you to Trump? How far are you willing to go in your loyalty to Trump? What about the battle between the people who are, who were never enamored with Trump, maybe supported him, but never liked him? Or the ones that don't like Trump, the Ben Sasses, the Haley's of the world. When do they enter the fray? And when they enter the fray, How's that going to all play out? I mean, I can see at least three, four factions within the Republican Party. How many of the never Trumpers are going to come back to the, uh, to the Republican Party? And when they come back, what's going to be the reception? And how are they going to deal with it? The Republican Party is in for four years of brutal infighting. Brutal infighting. That's going to be egged on by multiple media channels that's going to be egged on by Trump himself. You know, somebody says, John Bolton. Yeah, where does John Bolton fit into the new Republican Party? Or the neocons, Irving, uh, not Irving Crystal, his son, Bill Crystal, who was a never-Trumper. Where do these people belong? Do they belong? Can, can they be brought back into the Republican Party? Or does the Republican Party not want them? And how does this play out intellectually? Where does the Republican Party land up? So it's going to be a very interesting four years. It's going to be very interesting to watch what happens and where they go. Uh, some of them are never Republicans. Some of them are gone from the Republican Party. I, I read a story today of some, some of the Republican, some of the never Republicans have gone. Uh, never Trumpers are gone. They, they, they've joined the Democratic Party. They're trying to move the Democratic Party to the center they're trying to establish. Some of them want to establish a third party, but some of them want to go back to the Republican Party. And we'll see what happens. Yes, the American Capitalist Party. We can hope. We can hope one day. So definitely civil war in the Republican Party, and it's it's major, and it's going to last a long time. And the same thing is going to happen in the Democratic Party. Both political parties are fragmented. There's going to be a lot of infighting. There's still not a leader for the progressives. I mean, AOC, she herself admits uh, in that interview, she admits that she's too inexperienced and young to be competing for a leadership position. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman 
who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbrookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.